Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to try a, pe a Pettit Pinotage wine. Now, the Pettit, as you may recall from, uh, I guess, about a month or two ago, we tried for the first time a Pinotage wine, and that was the Man Pinotage wine, called Man or M-A-N. And uh, I had a choice between that one and the Pettit wine. Well, we tried that one, and it was actually pretty good. First time I'd ever had a Pinotage wine. And uh, I figured tonight we'll, we'll try the other one, which has been sitting on the shelf here for quite a while. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're joining me here for the first time, uh, I want to welcome you. And uh, if you're a regular, I want to welcome you in the chat. Let me see who's in the chat, first of all. We have uh, Nancy. Nancy's in the chat. Nancy, it's great to see you. How are you doing? It's great to see you, Nancy. And Nancy says the group is watching at the Holderman's. <laughs> all right. Welcome, welcome all. Uh, let's see. My wonderful wife, Chi, is in the chat. Hi, Chi. Hi, honey. How are you doing? And, uh, of course, we will be checking all the all the chats going across the streams here of course we do multi-stream this you can of course uh, watch it at drinkwithrick.com you can watch it on facebook here on facebook and, and on facebook page at drink with rick you can also catch it on youtube uh, our youtube channel is drink with rick and of course you can watch it on twitch twitch is savoya media but you can see it live on twitch and interact with me there we have the chat going there as well and you can also catch us on periscope uh, via twitter at drink with rick that's our twitter uh, account drink at drink with rick so you can catch us all of those places of course at drinkwithrick.com and uh you know of course you can always contact me you can chat with me live on any of the streams or uh, except on the website on the website we actually don't have a uh, a chat going there but you can watch on the website and you can leave comments uh below on the uh, page uh, below and uh, I'll read your comment I'll be happy to read your comments and respond to those as well uh, also you can contact me at rick at savoyamedia.com down the bottom there rick at savoyamedia.com so uh, there are many many ways to to get in touch with me <clears throat> tonight's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun tonight we're gonna have a lot of fun it's gonna be a great uh, show as I mentioned before, we're going to open this Pettit Pinotage wine. But I want to tell you about uh, things that have gone on this week. And, of course, we're going to toast birthdays and uh, national days. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be great. So stick around. Stick around. Tell me what you're drinking in the chat. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you would like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drink. And we'll see if we can't make that happen at some point in a future wine stream. So without too much... Uh, Let's see, too much introduction here. We've gone on already a couple of minutes on the introduction. Let's go ahead and introduce the wine. Uh, tonight we're drinking this. This is the Pinotage. This is the Pettit. This is a 2018 Pinotage wine. This is a Ken Forrester wine. And uh, this is from uh, Stellenbosch uh, in, in South Africa, actually. And uh, let me get you a shot of the the back side of this wine because I'm going to read the back end of it and we're going to learn a little bit more about this wine. This is uh, this is the back of the wine. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, Pettit Pinotage Red Wine, uh, Ken Forrester. It says, in a perfect world, oh I have to read it like uh, the, the, the old uh, uh, movie trailers from the, the 90s, right? In a perfect world. <laughs> in a world. It says, in a perfect world, we would all be happily, gainfully employed. All agriculture would naturally be sustainable and processes environmentally friendly. This is our goal. Follow our journey as we strive to achieve this balance in our community. And that's from KenForresterWines.com. This is uh, produced and bottled by a Forester Vineyards in uh, Stellenbosch. It's, it is a product of South Africa. There is a 14% alcohol by volume in this 750 milliliter uh, bottle of Pinotage wine. And, uh, you know, I, I want to make a note that uh, this, this Pinotage, once again, 
Uh, this was the one that we, uh, we, we were looking at two different Pinotage wines before, and I, I gave a little introduction to what Pinotage actually is. If you've never heard of Pinotage, what it is is it is a grape. It's not really a hybrid grape. It's more of a, a kind of a cross grape, um, cross uh, 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 blended grape, I guess you say, uh, of a, a Pinot, um, a Pinot Noir, and uh, a Meritage wine. What well, used to be called Meritage wine is now really known more as a Sasson, a Sasson uh, grape. Excuse me, a Sasson grape. So it's a blend of a, a Pinot Noir and a Sasson or Meritage, and that name is really sort of a, a you know blend of those two. Uh, so that that's how you get a Pinotage wine. Now. That grape uh, really, that blend kind of originated in South Africa. It's actually uh, from South Africa, which is very interesting. So that's why you find both of these wines that we tried are from South Africa, and that's what they're known for. Now, um, it does have a little bit of a reputation to, for being a little bit, um, uh, tasting a little bit uh, on, on the, uh, I want to say, burnt side. I should say, for lack of a better term, but uh, they've really refined the grapes over the years, and they've refined their their winemaking processes for the for the grapes. So it's really you get some pretty nice wines out of those, and it has developed into its own little niche, if you will, for grapes. So we're going to try this out here in just a moment or two, and to go with it, I'm going to be pairing it with uh, some foods tonight. Now I have a little bit of pizza, No, because this, this wine is supposed to go pretty good with pizza and uh, some grilled meats and I think some uh, things like venison and lamb and other kinds of, of meats. But uh, I have here a very collective, eclectic collection here. I have some pizza. Uh, it's a leftover pizza from, from Pizza Hut, but it still should be okay. You know, leftover pizzas sometime are the best, aren't they? Um, depends on the pizza, <laughs> but this should be okay to try with the wine. I also have some ziti, and I have some uh, pasta here. Uh, down here. I don't want to slide off the plate, uh, but this came from a party that I attended earlier this evening. I'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, a meatball, really nice meatball, and I had a few of those at the party as well. Probably a few more than I should have, but uh, they were really good meatballs. So we're going to try it out with that. A chicken wing. Uh, a couple of, uh, we have some sharp cheddar, this is extra sharp cheddar cheese, and some, uh, this is a pepper jack cheese. I don't know about pepper jack cheese, we'll, we'll try it out. And some of my wife's um, cheesecake, cheese cheesecake. Now, uh, if you recall, a couple of a couple of weeks ago, we had a, I, I promised that I would try the cheesecake with a wine, and then I forgot to do it. This night, tonight we're going to try to do it. Remind me. If I forget, <laughs> jump in the chat and remind me, okay, because I don't want to forget that. So, and uh, once again, I want to acknowledge everyone in the chat, and uh, Nancy's in the chat with us, and she's in the chat. Uh, Courtney is in the chat. Courtney, it's great to see you. Good evening. How you doing? Stick around. And Courtney says, hey, Rick. Hi, right back at you, Courtney. And she says, uh, happy birthday, Courtney. I think she's keeping that... <laughs> I think she's trying to keep that going. <laughs> and Jonathan's in the chat. It's great to see you, Jonathan. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're here and stick around. Missed you last week, uh, but, but uh, I'm glad you're here now. Let me see who's on YouTube. We had a bit of a problem. Valley Hounds is in uh, YouTube tonight. Valley Hounds says, uh, hey, Rickster. Hey, right back at you, Valley Hounds. And Valley Hounds says, happy birthday, Courtney. P.S. Matt, I'm, need, I'm needing more wine. Okay, we're going to keep this thing going on, on Courtney's birthday, aren't we? <laughs> it's going to—it's a running, running gag here. But um, I'm glad that we're, we're that you're here, uh, Valley Hounds on YouTube. We missed you last week also, and you know that really was—I uh, don't—it wasn't my fault. It's YouTube's fault. We had some trouble last week getting the stream up on YouTube for some unknown reason. I tried to get it up there but it didn't work so that's why we didn't have the stream on YouTube last week but it was everywhere else let's see what we have going on at Twitch not a whole lot going on Twitch at the moment uh, not a lot on Twitter Periscope uh, we'll come back to that but I think most of the most of the action here is happening on YouTube and Facebook and uh, we'll, we'll check back and forth. We'll check back and forth. So let's go ahead and, and open this wine. Now, once again, if you are just 
just joining us uh, here for the first time at Drink with Rick on Saturday Night Wine Stream. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. This is just something I'm doing for fun, not being paid. I'm just this is just something I'm doing for fun on a Saturday night because I like wine. I'm not a sommelier. I'm not a professional uh, wine taster or or a pairer or anything like that. I'm just. And every man who likes to drink wine, I know what I like, I know what I don't like. And I, I, I think a lot of people share that type of, of, of palate. Most people are not that, uh, they're, they're not professional wine drinkers. They're just regular people like, like you and me. So, we're, you know, that, that, that's, um, you know, that's how it goes here. <laughs> we just open the wine, enjoy it, taste it. You may not like what I like. I may not like what you like, but we'll find something that we like together. And, uh, you know, I, I also want to say, once again, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show. And I do have some show notes, but I don't always stick to them. I don't always adhere to them. I rely on everyone in the chat and all of you in the chat to, to carry the show. Because the show is really not about me, and it's not all about the wine. This is about us, about you and me, about doing this together. So... Uh, and, and just to lay the ground rules, we don't talk about politics, we don't talk about religion, we don't talk about stuff like that. It's all good. It's all friends getting together, just having a good time. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So let's go ahead uh, and open this bottle. Now, normally I have my trusty little uh, cork uh, corkscrew here. But we don't need it tonight because this is a screw cap bottle. And of course, to... Uh, Pour, we have to pour it into my Cooper's Hawk Genuine Crystal Glass from the Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. And I have standing by my, uh, my aerator, my trusty uh, aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set that I purchased off Amazon from 1999. But it's actually pretty good. It's been a trusty, trusty item for me. So we're going to go ahead and open, let me set this aside for a moment open this bottle not much to that <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and put the aerator in we'll, we'll let it breathe a little bit and we'll put the aerator in and then we'll give it a little pour and then let it let it uh, sit in the glass for a few moments and here we go There we go. We'll just try this for a tasting first. And uh, it's a medium bodied wine, medium body. And uh, it looks nice and clear. No sediment or anything like that. Not that I expected any, but uh, it's good. Let's set that aside for just a second. Let's learn a little bit more about this wine before we actually get to the tasting. Now, I went up on Ken Forrester's site. And they have a lot of wines there, KenForrester.com, but they did not have this particular year of Pettit uh, Pinotage available. In fact, they didn't have any information on the uh, Pettit wines at all. I had to go to other sources to find it. The Vino has it for $10.95, and uh, they, they, uh, they have it listed on their website, and as well as a few reviews. Uh, I found on winesearcher.com the price on this wine varied a little bit, not too much, but a little bit from $9.49 to $10.39. I think uh, it was uh, $12.99 is the highest I saw it here. And I think they had it for $121 for a case of 12 bottles. Uh, they had that available there. Uh, let's see where else we have uh, this wine listed. It is uh, wine.co.za, and uh, I believe that's New Zealand. Uh, they have it listed here. They don't have a price for it, but uh, they have it listed. And it is supposed to be a 100% Pinotage wine. No, no blend. This is supposed to be 100% Pinotage grapes, which is good. And that's what the man wine was that we tried before. So it should be good. And the wine of origin, Stellenbosch. And now, the, the interesting thing here is that the, the uh, wine... Uh, content, I mean, excuse me, the alcohol content says 14% by volume. A couple of the sites that I went to had it at different 14.5%. Uh, uh, There's 14% uh, this here in, in, in uh, the New Zealand site. Uh, or where is that? That's in, uh, yeah. So 
that's uh, it, it varies a little bit. And of course, if we discussed so many times before, uh, you can't really trust the actual posted alcohol content in here. And I, as a matter of fact, I had a little bit of a discussion like that with, my, uh, with some of my friends tonight at a party we went to. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, I think we've had uh, given this wine enough time to breathe a little bit. Let me see if I can get back to the chat here for just a moment and see what's going on there. Oh, Valley Hounds uh, in YouTube, Valley Hounds says, uh, uh, no love lost. Uh, people need to know what works best with day old Pizza Hut. That's true. That's true. Uh, I think, uh, you know, everyone at some point is going to be pairing Pizza Hut pizza with a wine, right? So it's, it's might as well, might as well give it a try, right? And uh, Valley Hounds says, love your V-neck sweater. Share the designer with your fans. <laughs> I hope it's in good sh uh, good shape here. <laughs> I guess so. That that's um, that's a Hollister. It's a Hollister sweater, and they don't make those this year. We we try to find a couple of um, couple more of these in case something happened to this one because this is sort of my trademark sweater here on the wine stream. Uh, but they didn't have any more of these V necks this year. They have a, a, a kind of a, a crew neck style. Uh, uh, this year, and the, the, the V-necks, uh, they, they didn't have them, so I was uh, a little disappointed in that. Uh, Courtney says, uh, let's see, uh, let me go back up here a little bit. Jonathan says, hey, Rick, sorry I missed you last week. I'm sorry I missed you, Jonathan, and it's, I'm glad you're here now. He says, Courtney's aged a lot since the, these last few months. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to get in the middle of that one, okay? <laughs> Courtney says, oh, mercy, I must be at least 99 by now. And uh, she says, uh, LOL, you guys started that. Poor Courtney. Courtney says, the worst part is I don't even get a free piece of cheesecake, she. <laughs> we'll continue that discussion in, the morning, uh, in, the, in a moment. In the morning. In a moment. I haven't had any wine yet, have I? All right, well, let's um, go ahead and try this wine. And uh, let's let's... Uh, let me give this a, uh, a, a couple of whiffs before we go. Let me just double check. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, okay, on the nose, it's kind of a little little plummy on the nose. A lot of fruit in this in this wine. Very fruity. I can smell I can smell the um, cherry. And uh, it smells a little spicy. Maybe some blackberry. There's some blackberry in here too. Good a taste. Ooh, wow. Kind of full. It's, um, well, a mix of berries, a mix of a lot of different berries. Try that again. Mm. Very cherry, very cherry, and um, a little bit of a little bit of blackberry. A lot of red fruit in here. In here, um, I want to say there's a, a little strawberry in it. A little strawberry, and that's a, I think that's the third time I've tasted a strawberry in a wine, which uh, surprised me. It does kind of taste uh, strawberry. Hmm. You know, it's dry, but it has a sweet one. On the tongue, it tastes like it's going to be sweet. But then when it's going down, it's fairly dry, and um, which is interesting. Now, it's very, very smooth. It is very, very smooth. Um, it has a little bit sweet, but it's a lot of spice. It, it, it's very spicy, this wine. And a little, a little acidity on this. A little acidity, not, not, not much. But uh, a few tannins. It is a little tannic, not a lot. It's just kind of a touch of that. It, it, it does, at least to me. We're going to try a little bit more of this, and then we'll try pairing it with some food. Uh, I think this is... Um, I like this wine so far. I like this wine. It's, it, I, it, I think I like it a little bit better than the, uh, the other Pinotage we had, the man. Some light... So I had something else too. Uh, on the taste, I want to say that uh, yeah, it's a lot of nice, nice spice in it. 
a lot of very fruity. It's a little juicy, a little juicy at first going down, but then it has a really nice finish, and uh, it's a very smooth finish, very smooth. Yeah, I think this is a pretty well balanced wine. I'm 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 impressed. It's a better pinotage than I than I thought it would be. Um, and uh, I like the first one. I like the man pinotage. But I think I like I actually like this one better. I actually think this Pettit wine is 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 better. So let's pour a little bit more of this. <laughs> he said, and uh, let's pair it with some food. So we'll we'll go ahead and try pairing it with some food. And uh, what I have here, let me uh, change my shot here just a little bit. And uh, where are my forks? My trusty forks. And my wife purchased these for me. Well, you know, I was using toothpicks, but my wife purchased these little forks. They're like the little party hors d'oeuvre forks. I should have pulled one of these out before the stream started, but I forgot. <laughs> there we go. And uh, these are cute little forks. So we're going to try that with this. You know what? I'm, I'm anxious to try the meatball with it. So we're going we're gonna to give the meatball a try. I'm going to cut part of this, if I can, with this little fork. Oh, what the heck. I'll just eat the whole thing. Mm. These meatballs are great. Mm. Mm. That's a spicy meatball. This, um, it's not bad. It's not bad, not bad with the meatball, the, the pairing. It's not too bad. A little bit, I'd say a little bit, um, I don't know I would go with the, because it, it has a sauce on it, this meatball does. I don't know if the sauce is the best pairing with this, but the meatball itself is, is okay. But I don't know that this, I don't know if the sauce mixes well with this particular wine. Let's try it with the, with the, uh, pizza the pizza hut pizza and we'll check back in here with the chat mm. yeah yeah I like it with the pizza it goes good with the pizza I have some other pots to here though I have the ZD let's try it with the ZD and this ZD came from uh, a party we attended earlier this evening with my, with our good friends uh, Michael and Trudy. Michael and Trudy, by the way, who I'm going to toast here in a few minutes because uh, it was an excellent party, and we were there. We, we I, I hated to leave, but we had to be here time for for to do the stream tonight. I didn't want to miss the stream, but it was a great party. We're going to try a little bit of the ziti, which, by the way, actually came from a place called uh, Brooklyn. They had catered from uh, Brooklyn Pizza down here nearby. Yeah, I like it. It kind of accentuates because the ziti has a little meat sauce in it, and it kind of brings out a little bit of flavor with the meat sauce. And uh, I think that this this is okay. With the with the ziti, let's uh, you know what I looked. At, one more thing I'd like to try it with is I'd like to try it with this cheddar, this sh the sharp cheddar, because a good wine needs a good cheese. And I would try this with the with that wonderful wonderful. I would try it with that. Let me have another piece of that. I would try it with that wonderful wonderful uh, Trader Joe's Gouda the the uh, creamy gouda but I don't have any more right now mm. so I'll try it with this instead it works with the extra sharp cheddar I don't know if I would try this with a light cheese like a mozzarella or something but it goes pretty well with that cheddar I like that very good, very good. It's it's uh, it's a good pairing. We're gonna have a little bit more of this. Let's get back to the chat for a moment, because that's where the action is. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
uh, Chi says, Rick has a lot of food to pair this time. He needs a bottle of pink drink later. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, I hope not. She's referring to Pepto-Bismol. I hope not. Uh, you know what? I, I had a lot of different foods to eat tonight. So it's possible my wife is much wiser than, than I in that respect. It's possible with all this food and the wine. Uh, it's, it's possible. It might be the case. Uh, Jonathan says, uh, got to get more Gouda, Rick. Yes, I do. I need to get more Gouda. Uh, Valley Hound says, uh, let's see. Uh, let me catch up with this. Oh, um, Valley Hound says, everyone needs to share Rick's show with their friends. Rick. My fee is very reasonable. Smiley face. <laughs> Thanks. Valley Hands, I do appreciate that. I really do. Uh, oh, yeah. Happy anniversary to me and my wife. Today is 17 or 18 years. Wonder how it would pair with Rocky Mountain oysters. I'm not going there right now, but, but uh, happy anniversary. 17 or 18 years. We're not sure which one. <laughs> Um, so back to the chat here. And, um, if you're, once again, if you're watching for the first time, don't be afraid to jump in. Don't be afraid to jump in. Uh, in fact, uh, before we get to the birthdays, uh, toast tonight, uh, I do want to remind everyone that next week we're going to have a special wine stream, uh, for the holidays and I'm going to be giving away some things. We're going to, and I'll talk more about that later, but we're going to be doing some giveaways. So be here for that and uh, participate in the chat, and, and I'm going to base some of that on, on, on some of the participation. I will be randomly selecting people out in the chat uh, for some of these giveaways, but um, you'll, you'll want to be here for that. You want to be here for that. And for those who have participated in those in the past, you know, uh, you know you've, you've gotten those. Now, the one person that, uh, uh, let's see, there was one person that uh, was in uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was trying to send her out a t-shirt, but... Uh, she never responded about that. So if you're, and you know who you are, uh, I, uh, if, if uh, you can send me your uh, address, a shipping address where I can send the shirt to, I can get that over to you. Uh, let's see. Back to the uh, birthdays. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to have, we're going to celebrate the birthdays. And for those of you watching, and, and apparently everyone's at the Holderman's party watching this, or uh, has been, if the party's still going on, it could very well be. But um, our good friends, uh, Michael and Trudy, uh, are uh, put on their annual Christmas party tonight. And they, ha they do this every year, and we have been, uh, we, we've been uh, celebrating for many, many years together. Uh, at their Christmas party, they have everyone over in the neighborhood, all their friends, and uh, we go every year. We we do our best to make it every year because they put on one phenomenal party. Really enjoy their parties. They have a lot of great food, a lot of great friends, a lot of great fellowshipping back and forth. It's just it's just a great time by all. And through the years, uh, oh, they've been doing this for a long, long time. But uh, we started attending when we first moved to Charlotte, and our kids were very young. And it's been uh, a long, long time. Through the years, we've watched every, all our kids grow up and, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, move away and come back. And, and you know, and, and it's just we, we've watched us all kind of grow older and hopefully wiser. And um, it's just and, and some some of our friends there we only see about once a year or so when we have the party. But it's it's always sort of like coming home every year so almost like coming home and uh michael and trudy are great people and um i and, and as a matter of fact uh, michael gave me a wine so that i could uh and it's actually back here behind me i don't know if you can see it that one right there that malbec we're going to try that we're going to open that up in a couple of weeks so uh michael uh if you're watching um be there for a couple of weeks. We'll open up that wine. We'll taste it and, and see uh, see how it is. We'll we'll pair it with some foods and, and see how that works out. I'm anxious to try that wine because he told me about that last year at the party. He had some of that. He buys that every year and he told me about it. And, and uh, 
I think at the time, I, I think he gets that at Costco, and I, I think it's the only place where they get the wine, that, that wine, it's a, it's a house wine, and uh, I don't really have a Costco card, so I wasn't able to pick it up from there, but he gave me a bottle this year, and I'm going to try it out. I tell you what, if I like that wine enough, I might just go out and get a Costco membership just to go pick up the wine. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Anyway, I'm not drinking enough, right? All right, well, let's go ahead and do the birthdays. This uh, glass is a little bit on the... Fix that glass a little bit. Uh, okay, so let's do the birthdays. First of all, I want to say happy birthday to my good friend Sean, Sean Yesner, uh, uh, Yesner Law, and uh, a fellow podcaster. He's uh, His birthday is tomorrow, Sunday, tomorrow. I want to say happy birthday, uh, Sean. I'm not going to give away your age. Sean uh, recently wrote a book, and it's back there. It's called Crushing Debt. It's back there behind me. Very good book, and uh, he's uh, he does he specializes in uh, law related to debt relief and and, and helping people uh, managing and get out of their debt and deal with bankruptcy and things like that. So he's uh, he's he specializes in that type of law. <clears throat> Very good book. I highly recommend it. Uh, anyway, here's to you, Sean, my friend. Happy happy birthday. And I hope you have many, many more. And I'll see you at PodFest uh, 2020 in just a few months uh, in, in March. We'll see you then. Uh, I also want to say happy birthday to an old friend, Ray. Uh, Ray and I worked together for a time, uh, uh, you know, in, in, uh, for a couple of years uh, when I first moved up here to Charlotte. Had a, uh, a job here for a little while at... Uh, uh, in, a, in a call center <laughs> and uh, doing some, some things there. And um, Ray uh, and I met there. And I think he's, uh, he's out of the country now. I think he's in uh, Japan or somewhere. Anyway, um, Ray, here's to you if you're watching now or later. Happy birthday. Because his birthday is Monday. And uh, I also want to say um, happy birthday to my friend Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie Frank, who is also a fellow podcaster, and um, let's see, uh, her birthday is Tuesday, and I want to say happy birthday to you, Bonnie. She does a nice, uh, she does a podcast, and she does some streaming as well. I say happy birthday to you, Bonnie, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at PodFest 2020 as well, Tommy and I both. One other person I would like to toast... um, uh, because I'm thinking about him, is my old friend Jeff, Jeff Pierce uh, from WOFL, my days at Channel 35 in Orlando. Jeff and I worked together in the film department, uh, and uh, an old friend of mine, uh, and uh, and hadn't seen him quite a while, but I uh, would like to see him again sometime soon. Anyway, Jeff recently had surgery uh, I won't go into the details of that, but uh, I, I really didn't know uh, at first, uh, you know, that I, uh, I heard about surgery and, and then uh, just as he was going in for it, apparently. <laughs> and uh, so he had some, some surgery done. Uh, he's doing better now. He's doing good now, from what I understand. The surgery was a success, and, and he's, he's fine. He's recovering nicely. And um, hope he's back on his feet uh, very, very soon. But here's to you, Jeff, my good friend Jeff Pierce. Here's to you, and I hope you have a very speedy recovery. And I'm glad the, the, uh, uh, the surgery was a success. Here's to you, Jeff. Um, we have... Now, I know it seems like I'm speeding along a little bit uh, uh, tonight because uh, often, uh, you know, usually I ramble on a lot. I'm trying to reduce that a little bit (laughs) because I did have someone uh, uh, post something a few weeks ago saying that, you know what, this is too long. (laughs) So I'm I'm like, okay, let me see if I can shorten this up a little bit because we have gone, our longest stream has been uh, about two hours. So I I realize that is a long time. And... uh, I, I don't want to overstay my welcome uh, on a stream every night, every Saturday night. So we'll, we'll try to, to keep it a reasonable time. 
So uh, what we have going on in the chat right now, um, Jonathan says, uh, Jonathan says the Aldi Gouda is great as well. Really, the Aldi Gouda, a Gouda, I have, you know what, I have never, I think I've walked in an Aldi once. We have one, a couple around this area, and then there's one in Rock Hill where I work on my day job, and I, I think I walked in there one time. Uh, and it, it didn't really, it didn't really, I don't know what really the appeal was. It made it different from, from anywhere else. But I didn't purchase anything there. I just kind of walked in and walked out. I think probably used her bathroom or something while I was on the road. Uh, but I'll, I guess I'll have to go there and try it. The Aldi Gouda, Gouda is really that, uh, that good, huh, Jonathan? Um, I might have to try that. I might have to go with your recommendation and, and give it a try. Uh, he uh, says, uh, comes in pre-sliced cracker cuts. Oh, no, okay, now pre-sliced Gouda cheese. Uh, that's something I could try. And it says, Aldi's cheese selection is actually amazing. You know what? Uh, I Maybe I just didn't give Aldi a, a fair shake because I was just in there and out, so I didn't really look around too much when I was there. But I think I'm going to go, uh, maybe this coming week, I'll, I'll stop in and, and give it a look and look around their cheese section. Let's see what we've got. So I trust your recommendation on that, Jonathan. So we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll make a point to, uh, to try that out this week. And then maybe uh, I'll pick up a little bit of cheese from Aldi, and we can try it. We can try it on next week's stream. How about that? Uh, Dana has joined us in the chat. Oh my goodness, Dana! It's great to see you. Great to see you, my old friend Dana. Dana uh, and I go way, way, way back, and we've had a lot of great times together when we were younger. Uh, we were in high school, and I've I've often talked about da uh, Dana in the past, uh, talking about uh, our our days in high school and and uh, church and and uh, just palling around and and doing some things. But uh, my my friend Dana. Uh, uh, it's, it's great to see you here in the chat. Stick around and tell me what you're up to. Let's catch up a little bit. Tell me how you're doing. Uh, I, I, I really want to hear more about you guys <laughs> and what you are doing. Uh, let's see what uh, Valley Hounds is saying here. Uh, ran, let's see. Uh, he says, uh, I need to get on Mike and Doodle's VIP list. Sean must be old based on the secrecy. Uh, based Sean must be old based on the secrecy. But say this loudly: Happy birthday, Sean! Uh, without the ramble, ain't no gamble. <laughs> well, that's true. I, I, I'm 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 always gambling on this show. But but thanks. Sean must be old based on. Actually, he's not. He's really not that old, and um, he he has a fairly young family. But he's very accomplished. Uh, a very accomplished attorney. Uh, he's younger than me. I'll, I'll say that. He's, he's quite a bit younger than me, but um, a really, really nice guy, and uh, he, he really knows his stuff. But uh, once again, happy birthday, Sean, on behalf of the Valley Hounds. Let's see what we got going on here in um, Twitch. Uh, nothing much on Twitch. You know, I to, to be honest, and and I get on Twitch, and Twitch is really for the gamers set. I know, and they're really trying to change their, they're really trying to change their platform up a bit. Um, but I don't think there are uh, enough people drinking wine on Twitch right now. I think it's still the young gamer set on there. We'll see. Uh, you know, we'll stick stick around and and uh, keep doing it on Twitch for a while and see what happens. But um, I think most of the action happens on Facebook and YouTube here. But, uh, you know, look, anybody in Twitch is watching, drop in. Say hi. Tell me how you're doing. And Tim has joined us in the chat. Tim, it's always good to see you. And how are you doing? How are you doing? And um, how's your daughter doing? And uh, uh, Tim's daughter, of course, she's, a, uh, a, a, she's an Instagram um, influencer. And she uh, has her own thing going there. I think she has a nice career ahead of her. Uh, so Tim and I go way back to WFL as well. Jonathan says, Rick, uh, your wine shelf is filling up. Plans for expansion? <laughs> Funny you should ask because, uh, you know, the, all of these wines in the back, just to, uh, for background for those who are new to the, to, the, um, to the wine stream. Let me get a wider shot here. All the wines in the back, these are wines that we have 
tasted, opened and tasted on the wine stream. Every single one of those is a wine that we have tasted, except for the one up on top that we haven't tasted yet, but we will get to that in a couple of weeks. But all those other wines that are open, they uh, are wines we've tasted in the past. This is our 40th wine stream. So you're looking at 40 bottles of wine back there. 40 empty bottles of wine. And uh, what I'm doing here is every year, because uh, we're coming up on our first year, pretty, fairly close to our first year. On our first year, what we do, what I'm, I plan to do is I plan to uh, clear the shelf and start with the next year for the bottles of wine. Does that make sense? Uh, so, we're, so what we'll do is every year, because there's no way that I, if, if I don't know how long I'll be doing this, but uh, you know, if we're having fun, we're doing this for a while, um, and that shelf is almost full, and I really don't have any more room to put up more shelves, to, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to have to clear it off and then start for the next for the next year. I don't like to use the term seasons. Uh, we're talking about uh, that. It's, it sounds so... So much like uh, like TV shows, and, and, and this is really not a TV show per se. Um, so th this in an, in an internet show. So we, we really I'm really going by years. Uh, Tim says doing well. Thanks, Rick, and I'm I'm glad you are, Tim. I'm I'm glad you're doing fine. And once again, stick around and and uh, and, and drink along with me. Gordon has joined us in the chat. Gordon, it's great to see you also. Gordon says, that's a great idea, Rick. Cheers to you and yours. Happy holidays. What will you be drinking on New Year's Eve? Well, Gordon, I'm glad you asked. Well, uh, well, on New Year's Eve, you know, to be honest, I haven't really picked anything else per se on New Year's Eve, but the weekend after New Year's, that, that's the regular Saturday night, uh, I'm planning to open up that Malbec that's sitting in the back that was given to me by my good friend, uh, Michael. And uh, we're going to open that up and, and try that out. Now, next week, I'll get to what we're going to be drinking next week, uh, next, but or soon, uh, a little bit later in the show. But uh, I want to say that it's, it's going to be a special show next week. We're going to have a lot of fun. Gordon, I hope you're going to be there. And Gordon, of course, is uh, uh, our resident uh, podcast uh, legal expert. He is also an attorney, uh, like Sean is. And uh, Gordon uh, specializes in, um, you know, copyright law and, and, and trademark law and that sort of thing related to podcasting. So, uh, in fact, Gordon, you were doing a, uh, I think you were doing a uh, boot camp today, right? There's a boot camp that you had going on today. Um, and I, I looked at, I, I didn't have, I really couldn't participate in any of that today because I, I had too much going on. But I know, I did I knew about the boot camp, and uh, that's a great idea. Uh, I, I like that. I think more people need, I think more podcasters, new and old, need that type of a guidance. So I think a boot, a boot camp is an excellent, uh, an excellent concept. Uh, she says uh, Rick's collecting them for his retirement collection. LOL, pride. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm probably going to move these to garage. I, I don't have the heart to throw them out, so I'm going to move them to the garage. Uh, Gordon says, uh, yes, we had a good time. Very full of details. Boot camp again next month and then live at PodFest. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to, if you're going to be doing that live at PodFest, uh, Gordon, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to checking that out, to, to, uh, to uh, uh, getting in on that, uh, you know, let me know how that's uh, how that works out. You know how that works, and I'll see if I can get in on that. I think uh, I think everybody needs that. I I think all the podcasters do. Without going to great de detail, it's uh, more and more I see in a lot of the discussions on Facebook and in other places that uh, it just seems there's to be a lot of confusion in that arena. And I think uh, there are a lot of podcasters really need that kind of guidance, especially in this day and age. Uh, with so much litigation going on and, and so many risks in, in this arena, I think that's a good idea. Gordon says, great, thanks for the plug. Love what you're doing with your show. Well, Gordon, I, I like what you're doing with yours, so keep up the good work. And uh, yes, I do I do check it out, and uh, I, I do watch your videos. Uh, Gordon is very knowledgeable in what he does. Let's uh, let's see. We hit the na the birthdays. I kind of uh, hadn't gone to the national days yet. I'm gonna not gonna go too deep into that, but uh, there are a couple other things I want to talk about. 
uh, before the stream's over. But I did want to uh, take a look at the national days for, uh, well, one that happened yesterday. <clears throat> that was the 13th. Uh, you know, it was National Cocoa Day and National Violin Day and National Day of the Horse. That was Senate Resolution 452. I'm not sure how long ago that happened, but apparently it was quite a while ago. National Day of the Horse. Um, there's also Pick a Pathologist Pal Day. Pick a Pathologist Pal Day. But it was also National Guard Day, and I will drink to that. National Guard, you know, our National Guard, they, they, they perform very, very important services for, for our country. <clears throat> and oftentimes the National Guards will, the National Guard will be there or will be called into service during times of a, an emergency, like a weather emergency, like a hurricane or something like that, and, uh, you know, kind of emergency where they need people there picking up the pieces after the fact and trying to help with, uh, with those who are distressed after, after a, a, a natural, natural disaster. Now, the National Guard is, of course, the National Guard for our country and our borders, but they are there. They perform a lot of, uh, of other services as well. So when they call out the National Guard to, to help out with some of those, those um, uh, emergencies, uh, national emergencies. Uh, the the these guys you know, and and they're basically, a lot of them are are you know people who are, um, uh, volunteers retired. And I want to say volunteers are people who have been in the armed forces that have, uh, uh, that uh, serve in the national guard as well. Uh, they have people in the national guard that I I knew uh, there was a person I worked with who was uh, was in the, I believe in the national guard, and uh, he would tell me you know they, they would get dispatched to certain certain areas that that uh and he'd be gone for a few days and uh that sort of thing but the uh they perform um a lot you know they they do a lot of of uh different things uh for for us for citizens for the citizens of this country and uh here's the national guard day i don't know that enough about the national guard because i have never been involved in it so i could be wrong about some of that stuff but i all i do know is that those who have um who i've known in the national guard they get called out for stuff and, and they're gone for a while and they come back and they sometimes they don't talk about it a whole lot you know <laughs> after they come back so uh and, and uh, i'm i can imagine it it can be kind of stressful sometimes National Salesperson Day. Second Friday in December is National Salesperson Day. I'll drink to that. There are salespeople on our staff at Buy Two Way Radios. By the way, speaking of um, weather disasters and, and Buy Two Way Radios, of course, so for full disclosure, I work for Buy Two Way Radios. Um, you know, I talk about weather radios. And we're going to be giving one away next week, as a matter of fact, a, a weather radio. I have one of these sitting on my desk over here. But... Um, you know, you, if you need an, a, a weather radio or any kind of weather radio, you know that we do have a uh, promo code for Buy Two Way Radios assigned to this show. It's called Wine Show. That, that promo code is Wine Show. You may you can purchase any radio, or radio accessory, weather radios, whatever, and uh, you can get five percent off your purchase. Uh, from that, now I don't make anything off of that myself. I just get to keep my job. <laughs> so. But, uh, uh, you know, that, that it's just something that my boss said here. You can give uh, your, your viewers and, and your listeners of the uh, of, of Drink with Rick uh, and the Saturday Night Wine Stream uh, a discount. So that's, that's the promo code they have assigned to me. So uh, use it. Use it. Everybody needs a weather radio. Everybody does. Uh, I have several in the house, as my wife can attest to. Uh, so December 14th, which is today, is National Booyah Base Day and National Alabama Day. Should we drink to National Alabama Day? I don't know. What do you say? Uh, what do you guys say? You say we could, should drink to National uh, Alabama Day? Uh, why not? It's National Alabama Day. Um. Let's see, Valley Hound uh, says, uh, without, uh, let's see, oh, uh, let's see John's collection of wines. I'm sure John has quite a, uh, a collection of wines, huh? And uh, Valley Hound says, I'm just jealous. And uh, I, I say, you know, 
I want to say that uh, I have a, a few more wines downstairs, but those are full bottles, and I keep them uh, downstairs uh, in my wine fridge. So this is not the full collection I have. In fact, these are full bottles of wines here. And just uh, for the grand tour, these are bottles of wine. Uh, these are bottles of wines that uh, I don't touch because those are the that's that's in the uh, section that's for wines that are uh, that that we don't drink <laughs> for lack of uh, I'll just say these are the wines that we don't drink. Uh, so. National Days. I think uh, I think that kind of covers National Days here, and we could drink to one more National Day. What's it going to be? I would say, uh, oh boy, National Monkey Day. Uh, I, I I have no idea. I'm not. I don't know. National Wreaths Across America Day. Uh, that changes annually, but December 14th, 2019. December 15th is National Cupcake Day. I'll drink to that. National Cupcake Day. I like cupcakes too much. National Cupcake Day, Bill of Rights Day. You know, it's a good thing we have the Bill of Rights. I'll drink to the Bill of Rights Day. And uh, National Cat Herders Day. And National Wear Your Pearls Day. I don't have any pearls to wear. And uh, that, that's for December 15th. That's tomorrow. And December 16th is National Chocolate Covered Anything Day. I will drink to that. National Chocolate Covered Anything. I'm a chocolate covered chocolate. Yeah, I do like chocolate. In fact, I've tried a chocolate wine. Or, uh, uh, we might open up a chocolate wine uh, maybe for the holidays. We'll, we'll see what happens. I think that'll do it for the National Days. I don't want to get too far to the bottom on, on the National Days. There is, are a couple other things I do want to talk about, though. Um... My fr my good friend Ed Ed Panis, who's who's a regular here, and, and some of you know him. Uh, some of the fellow podcasters know him. Ed Panis is a uh, podcaster. He and his wife Shelley do a show called Selling Sarasota. They're from Sarasota, Florida. Um, they're realtors, and uh, Ed has uh, every year he participates in an event. Uh, to uh, it's uh, called uh, what does it say? Uh, it's uh, uh, where where are my notes here? And it's right now. Okay, here it goes. The Tough Mudder. I, I don't know why I can't ever remember. I wrote it down because I can never keep that stuff in my head. The Tough Mudder of Central Florida and the Spartan Beast Race. He participates in this. The Tough Mudder is basically like an obstacle course kind of thing in a race uh, through the mud um, that he does. And he does this for charity. He does this for uh, the Florida Cancer Specialist Foundation. Now, his wife, his wife Shelly... Uh, was was diagnosed with cancer uh, about a year or so ago, and um, uh, and, and from what I understand, she's okay. She's okay now. Um, but uh, he has been participating. It's is in uh, in raising money for Florida Cancer Specialist Foundation of uh, in in Florida, and uh, it is a nonprofit organization. And uh, he participated in this uh, this race, and he's been raising some money for it. I I, um, I would like to say if, and I think they're still raising money for him there. You can make a donation if you'd like to donate to the Florida Cancer Specialist Foundation, and you can put in twenty, thirty, fifty, whatever you want. You can donate a certain amount, but you can go over there uh, to the Florida Cancer Specialist Foundation and, and place a donation. Uh, I think his race is over, and I think he, he did pretty well in that. But I think that was a really good cause, and I, I want to, I want to raise a toast to my friend Ed, because I think that's a very worthy cause. Very worthy cause. Here's you, Ed, and Shelley. And I want to say that that uh, very good. I, you know, cancer is kind of. Uh, that kind of hits home to me because I had three of my family members that passed away from cancer over the years. Um, my mom passed away from cancer when she was about 50, uh, back in, in, uh, in, in the early 80s. My, uh, my younger brother, uh, Tony, uh, passed away from, from cancer uh, back in, uh, uh, well, you know, it was, it was uh, some time ago, but he was... 
it was too soon. It was too soon. I don't want to get too too much into this, but my my dad um, also passed away from cancer when he was 84 uh, a few years ago. So I've I've lost three family members to cancer. I've had we've had uh, a few uh, kind of we've had a concern since then about another family member. I've I've uh, I get checked fairly regularly for that sort of thing because apparently it, it does run in my family. So I'm, it's very personal for me, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm sensitive to that. And, uh, and, and you know, if you can, uh, uh, any opportunity that, that I can to help uh, participate in that sort of thing, I, it's, it's something that uh, I think is worth, worth uh, uh, participating in. Uh, not mean to ramble on, but it's just... <laughs> I don't want to say too much about anything because this is a public stream, and a lot of this is, you know, some of this is, is rather personal for me. Um, so I try not to get too far into it. But uh, I do want to to uh, say that we did participate, and Tommy and I participated in something. We did we did a charity event, an event for charity uh, last weekend. As a matter of fact, we uh, Tommy uh, he's been he attends uh, CPCC and and uh, on a scholarship and one of his requirements on the scholarship is to do a uh, to do some uh, public service and, and some some charity work and uh, he gets to choose what he wants to do and um, this past weekend one of the things that he wanted to do was to participate in this annual. Um, up here at the uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway, they do an annual, um, what they call the Holiday of Lights. And what they do is they take the speedway and they, they decorate the whole speedway area with, with lights. And then you can pay uh, you know, per car, per, per uh, vehicle that you're in, uh, get as many people crammed in there as possible. And you can drive onto the speedway, and they have it in a roval uh, set up. A roval is like, instead of the regular oval, it's called a roval because you're kind of roving around and it's, and it's in a various, it's in uh, a different configuration from the standard racetrack oval. And you can uh, pay uh, per car load to get on the track, to actually get on the track and drive around the track with all the lights and stuff going on and the, the displays and they have the activities for the kids and a lot of fun stuff. Well, what they were doing this year was uh, Second Harvest Food Bank of Metrolina uh, was collecting food donations uh, at the start. And, and if you brought in five cans of food or if you brought in five boxes of dry food to donate, uh, you could get $10 off the admission to get into the, the gate, to get into the, the uh, uh, Holiday of Lights event and they needed volunteers to collect the you know to stand there at the gate and collect all the food and that sort of thing and they were giving it was very very cool it was very cool by the way so tommy and i went to this and of course i drove them up there but when i got there there weren't that many the, the volunteers hadn't most of them hadn't arrived yet we were basically the first ones there and um have a little more of this so we went there, and there weren't a whole lot of people there yet. Nobody had really arrived. I, actually, the, I think the, the food bank people hadn't really officially arrived yet, the people organizing that, that particular event. So we, we were very early. So I'm hanging around. I'm like, well, I don't have anything to do for four hours. And it's, it was pretty cold outside. It was, it was, it was in the 40s, and we're outside, and, and the cars are going to line up, and and uh, we were supposed to collect the food. Well, Tommy was. Uh, so I didn't have anything to do for four hours. So I said, well, why don't I go ahead and I, I said, look, you need more volunteers. I'll volunteer too. What, what the hey? I, I got nothing else to do. And it could be fun. And so uh, they said, great, you know, we'll, we'll put you in. So everybody else uh, and the, the other, um, the other uh, volunteers arrived later on, but uh, you know, and, and so I was just kind of in there with them. So I you know, just volunteered, and we all just kind of did it, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, it, it, 
Food Lion was there. They were kind of co-sponsoring some of that, and uh, they were giving out coupons and they were giving out uh, ornaments and things like that to everyone who everyone who donated the food. Food Lion would would give them some freebies, and that was our job. We would collect the cans and the food, and then we would give out to people in their cars. And we would give out the freebies, the the uh, uh, the, the free gifts. And, uh, and I love giving out free stuff. I love giving away free stuff. As my bosses will attest to at work, I love to give away free stuff. <laughs> so it was natural for me. I had a great, I had a blast. Tommy and I both had a great time. It, it was just, you know, we're collecting food uh, you know, for the uh, food bank and, and uh, we're giving out free items and it was just a lot of fun. So that, that's what we did uh, on, that was last Sunday night. Well, um, so it, uh, after it was done um, for the Second Harvest, and we collected quite a bit of food for Second Harvest, by the way. It was a very, very successful event. Um, uh, when we were done, they had some, uh, some of these ornaments and things left over. And, um, and I said, well, uh, and I was telling some people about the wine stream, and, and they would say, hey, you know, here's, here's some you could take over and give away on your, on your wine stream. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. So we have a few ornaments to give away. And these are really nice ornaments. Let me see if I can see if I grab it over here. It's in the back. Uh, but it's one of these really nice, really nice ornament. Really large. Pretty good quality. And uh, so we're going to give away. I'm going to give a, sh a closer shot of this thing. This is kind of cool. So we're, I have about four of these to give away on uh, on the wine stream uh next next week so be there be in the chat and i'll give i'll give one away uh, I'll, I'll give i've got four of them to give away so so reason to be here right if not to see me drink wine uh to to get something free a free ornament uh, just time for the holidays so um there is one other thing that i want to mention uh my son tommy also, I'm very, very proud of him. He's a good kid. And, you know, uh, those of you who know Tommy, I uh, know he's also, uh, particularly the podcasters out there, know that he's uh, uh, like I am. I've, I've been podcasting for, for, for over 13 years. And my son, Tommy, is um, kind of second-generation podcaster, but he's almost in what they call an OG himself because he's been podcasting for about 10 now. And... Uh, <laughs> He's been doing it for quite a long time since he was a kid, since he was since he was about uh, uh, nine or ten years old, and um, and anyway, so he uh, just got accepted. We we're very very proud of him. He just got accepted to uh, Appalachian State University, and uh, so we're very proud of him. He's going to be starting in. Uh, I think he has one more semester here at uh, CPCC, and then he's going to be starting in fall of 2020. Uh, at Appalachian, which is up in Boone, North Carolina, up in the mountains. And of course, we, we like, we, which works out fine for us because we like to go up to Boone uh, uh, once or twice a year ourselves because we just we, we love the area. It's, 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 it's uh, a really nice area, and uh, we always have a great time when we go up there. Uh, but we, we love the Boone and, and uh, Blowing Rock area. So, um, uh, and, and we toured Appalachian uh, we, we State when we were there earlier this year, and uh, really, really nice campus. Really, we were really impressed with the campus. Uh, it was bigger than I thought it was. I thought it was just a little school, but it, it's actually a, a bigger than I thought. So, um, you know, he's been accepted there. So, um, congratulations to Tommy. I'm going to toast my son. Here's you, Tommy. A lot, lots of hard work, but uh, you did it, son. You did it. Congratulations. We're proud of you. That's for my son Tommy. We'll give him a special toast. Uh, let's see what we've got going on in. Um, Bellhound says National Recyclable Baggy of Pet Poop Bag Day is next week, Tuesday. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and he says, see you, Rick. Uh, great show as always. Merry Christmas. And right back at you, Valley Hounds. Uh, I hate to see you go so soon, but you have a great. Great week, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Be here next week for the giveaways. We'll we'll uh, we'll do that. And uh, I oh 
I'm glad I reminded myself. We're going to try this before we go any further. We're going to end the stream a little early tonight, but uh, before we go, I'm going to try my wife cheese cheesecake and see if it pairs with the swine. Mm. It's kind of a raspberry strawberry blend of this cheesecake. I don't know. If, mm, I don't know if you can see this really well, but it is um, this right here. And uh, she puts a really nice design on it. It's very the cheesecake's very good, and she has a. Uh, I'm making a mess here. She has a Oreo crust that she puts together herself. She tell, she'll take a bag of Oreos uh, or a package of Oreos and pound them to to uh, pound them to a pulp, and then she'll make a crust out of them and then make her cheesecake. So we're gonna try this. Mm. Well, that's rich. Mm. It's good. It's good, but it's 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 rich. Mm. <laughs> I think one should suffice uh, should suffice because I, I I could feel the pounds coming on right now. Mm. Yeah, that'll put on some pounds. Eat too much of that with the wine, I should say. So anyway, um, I, th I think that pretty much wraps it up for the stream tonight. I'm going to try to cut this short a little bit. Uh, it's been a long day. Once again, we had a, uh, for those of you still um, at the Holderman's, their party, uh, Michael and Trudy, uh, we had a great time as always. And uh, it was a great party. I enjoyed uh, catching up with everyone there again. And uh, looking forward to seeing them again very soon. And hopefully we won't wait till a whole year to make that happen. Um, and uh, they're really, really good people. And, uh, and we really enjoy we really enjoy their company uh, every time we see them. Uh, I wanted to remind everyone next week once again, our show, uh, the holiday show, I guess you could say, lack of a better term, happening on the 21st. We are going to be opening, and I don't have it up here with tonight with me, but let me see if I have a picture of it somewhere. I, I know I've shown it before. Uh, I don't have it here, right here, uh, right now. But uh, I don't have it somewhere. I don't want to spend too much time looking for it. But uh, we are, let me have it up here. Here it is. This is what we're opening next week. Been a long time waiting, and uh, Jonathan, you're still in the chat. I'm, I'm sure you'll be happy to see that. And, and um, you know, uh, Matt, uh, I'm sure that uh, he'll uh, want to check this out. But I am going to next week for the holiday episode open up the Escorlade. And I've talked about this wine a few times. Uh, I purchased this at Wine Store in Blakeney. I actually gave uh, my uh, my friend. Michael and Trudy, uh, my friends there the, uh, uh, from the party, I gave them a bottle of this tonight. I had two bottles that I purchased. I gave them a bottle of this tonight uh, because I had taste tested it uh, when, when they did a tasting for it at Wine Store some months ago. And uh, I, I really, it, it, the wine really intrigued me. But uh, Michael and Trudy uh, got my... Um, my, my actually uh, uh, that bottle I was saving that I, I was saving basically for them, and uh, I'm I know they're going to enjoy this wine. I'm pretty sure they will. Um, this is this is really uh, we're going to talk about this wine next year, uh, next week. <laughs> we're going to talk about this wine next week, and uh, and catch you up on it there. A little a little intriguing story with this wine, and uh, we're going to test it taste it and we're going to pair it up with some special foods i think anyway uh that's the escorlada and uh looking forward to opening that i've been wanting to open it for quite a while uh, just been waiting for the right time the right moment i think that next week is going to be the right time to do it so i hope you'll join me for that charles has joined us in the, uh in the chat and charles it is awesome to see you here it's awesome that you're here uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you. I hope you're doing well. I hope the family's doing well. 
Um, I, I hope you're having a great holiday season. And, and uh, you know, uh, with Charles and Pete also, Pete's in the chat as well. Pete, I'm glad to see you too. Uh, my cousin Pete, uh, and, and uh, please tell me how, how things are going with you and Denise and Aunt Connie. Jonathan says, Rick, you're going to catch an Uber back to the Holderman's. <laughs> I'd like to, but I think their party's about over then, um, unless uh, someone over there can catch me up on, on the status of the party. But I think it is probably winding down about now. Uh, it's probably probably over about now. But uh, I, I think uh, it was a pretty awesome party. I, know, I think I'm good for the night. Once I've opened this bottle of wine, I'm, I'm good for the night. I will say, though, that earlier this evening I did have and, and I, you know, I'll, I've got a minute to do this. I've got a minute. Uh, every year, it's been it's become kind of a tradition. Every year, when we go to uh, Michael and Trudy's place for their party, um, they put out a great spread, first of all. They really do. It's just they, they go all out. They put a lot of work into it. They go all out. It's very impressive. And uh, I'm really, really grateful uh, for what for for what they do and the fact that we're invited every year to to participate and to be part of it, it's just it's an honor, because um, they're great people. Uh, but one of the things he does, he puts out a lot of wine. He puts out he puts out a lot of the his favorite the Malbec that we're going to try in a couple of weeks. So I'm anxious to try this. But uh, I didn't have any of the wine tonight because I was saving up for the wine stream because I was going to be driving. I did have a beer with dinner. But that was very, very early on. And then I switched to water, switched to water the rest of the night, so I was fine. I did have one beer. But the one beer I had is a phenomenal beer. The one beer I had was uh, the same uh, beer that I have every year when I go there. It's become kind of a tradition with me. Uh, every year, Michael buys the, uh, the uh, Samuel Adams a holiday pack, and the Samuel Adams. Now, what Samuel Adams? If you're not familiar, you know they put out uh, a lot of uh, great beers. But uh, Samuel Adams, every year they put out their, they, you know, they do their Oktoberfest pack where they put special beers in that, and they put do uh, like a, I think they do a spring pack and all that kind of stuff. But every year they do a holiday pack where they'll put. Um, uh, they'll package a lot of different beers. I think about uh, one or two of each. I think about two of each in a pack, or, or one of each in a pack, in a special package, uh, all their different beers that they brew for the holidays. And uh, one of the beers that they do that is specific, that, that you only find in that pack, is um, is a chocolate bock. They, they do a uh, Samuel Adams chocolate bock. And I love a good chocolate bock, but this one is really, I mean, it's chocolatey. It's its a chocolate bock, and it's a really good. Now, some people don't like the flavored beers. I, I get that. I understand. I happen to be one person who kind of likes some of the flavored beer. It depends on the beer. depends on the brewery. depends on, on how they're doing it. But this chocolate bock is really good. Um, I love it. it's very smooth. It's 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 just and it's it, 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 they use real cocoa in it and it's it's just as far as I know and it's just really really nice beer. So I make it a point because I know that the he only gets a, a few of these packs and so there's only like one bottle or two in each pack. So we usually get there early and uh, you know oftentimes we're fairly early on before the crowd has gotten there so I usually am able to get and like this year I we were one of the first to get there so uh, of course all the beer was there there and I was able to get the chocolate bock and um, so I, I had my chocolate bock for the year <laughs> at the party but that's kind of a tradition it's like every year I go looking there for the chocolate bock and I had I, I, yeah I get one every year uh, over there, and uh, I thank Michael for it. That's that's pretty awesome because uh, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty nice. It's a nice beer. That's from Michael. In uh, the chocolate box. Um, anyway, where was it going? Oh, I, I just want to mention that. That's what it was. So um, now after that, once again, I had the water, and I just switched to water. And because I, I want, I wanted to just uh, drive home and, and be completely sober, and I just had the beer with dinner. I had it with dinner early on, 
Um, not a big deal at that point. But I pur purposely did not touch any of the wine or anything else after that point because I wanted to be able to, I wanted to drive home. And um, so I was waiting to get home to do the wine stream so I could open up this bottle. We got halfway through the bottle. I think we're pretty much done for the night for the bottle of wine. But uh, I'm a big believer in, in drinking responsibly and not drinking and driving, uh, not texting and driving. And I've, I've harped on that quite a bit in the past. And I, I really would like for, for all my friends to do the same because I want everybody to be safe and, 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 and sound. And, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've lost a loved one to a, a drunk driving. I've, I've had an, uh, a family member who was an alcoholic that, that uh, put my life and the lives of others in danger in the past. And uh, it was not, not good. So that's why I, I do not, and I had a friend of mine uh, from way back who, who uh, uh, wound up in a wheelchair uh, pretty much for the rest of his life because of, of drunk driving. So uh, i not a fan of drunk driving. I don't, I'm, I don't advocate for that at all. So if you're going to drink, I want you to drink with Rick, but drink in the comfort of your home your apartment, your hotel room, wherever you are, and stay there. And if you uh, need to get home, take an Uber or take a Lyft, something like that. But don't don't drive yourself. Get a designated driver to do it for you. Okay, um, that's my message and disclaimer for the night. And I know I sound like a broken record sometimes. It's probably the time of the night where everybody says, oh, "Okay, I'm done," <laughs> and 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 and. Uh, clicks off me and goes to the cat videos or the, the dog videos or something. <laughs> that's okay. But, but look, that's, that's my message. I, I want to drive that home because I, I, I care about you. You're my friends. I care about you. And that's it right there. Uh, and I want you to be safe. I want you to stay safe. Um, I want us all to be safe. I care. So that's why I harp on it. Anyway, so uh, next week, once again, the holiday show, we're going to open up the uh, Escorlada. We're going to give away some prizes. We're going to have a lot of fun, and um, hopefully you'll join me for that. Uh, I want to say thank you. It's time to close up the stream now, and we will do that. I want to say thank you very, very much for being here with me tonight. Um, I want to uh, thank everybody who's joining me in the chat. I want to thank uh, Nancy and uh, the whole group watching at uh, Holderman's, uh, if they're still there. <laughs> I'm falling asleep by this time. And my lovely wife, Chi. And I want to thank Courtney for being here and Jonathan and Valley Hounds. Thank you for, for being here this evening. Uh, always a lot of fun. Dana, I want to thank you for, for joining us in the chat. And uh, Tim, I want to thank you for watching tonight and, and being here and joining in the chat. Gordon, thank you. I, I really appreciate you being here. And Charles, thank you for, for being here as well. Uh, and Pete, uh, it's good to see you, Pete, as well. And I hope everyone's doing fine. I really appreciate all of you. This is what this show is about. Once again, it's not about me. It's a little bit about the wine, but really it's more about us and just getting together and just being together and having a great time and uh, on a Saturday night um, and I am honored I am honored that my friends are here and that everyone's joining me tonight and they're watching and if you're watching later if you can't catch it now if you catch it later I want to say thank you for 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 catching me uh, then, whenever watching me, whenever you do get a chance to watch or listening on the podcast. Of course, you know, you can watch me anytime. Uh, I am on the internet and at drinkwithrick.com. Uh, you can also catch me, uh, you can watch later on on YouTube. You can watch later on on, on, on Facebook. Um, I think Twitch keeps the recordings for 60 days. You know, you can also listen to the podcast. Podcast out comes out Monday nights, 10 p.m. on Monday nights, uh, every Monday, and you can catch the podcast there. We're on 
Stitcher, we're on Blueberry, we're on uh, wherever we're on everywhere. Uh, we're, you can catch us on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and uh, iHeartRadio and all those places. You can hear us on all around. You can also, if you have an Amazon Echo or, or you know, you can say Alexa Play Drink with Rick podcast. Or, and you can also do the same thing on Google. We're on Google Podcasts as well. So uh, you can hear me anytime, uh, anywhere. Uh, but if you do drink with me, just drink from the comfort of your home. Um, and, of course, you can also contact me at rick at savoymedia.com anytime. But if where, wherever you are, please, uh, drinking once again, uh, be safe. Have a great week. Have a safe week. And join me again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.